G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy as we bask in the relatively breaking news that Collingwood has qualified for the 2023 Grand Final. They've been the best team all year, but gee, they did it the hard way. That was a heart-stopping prelim final against the Giants. And honestly, like the first thing that comes to my head when trying to review this video is that you wouldn't have believed, if you were neutral, if you hadn't been following this season, if you'd watched that prelim in isolation, you wouldn't have thought that that was the best team all year on their home deck playing against the seventh best team, an interstate side playing away from home. Uh, you would have thought that the two sides were a lot closer in ability than what the latter would have suggested. And uh, tonight was just an absolute war. That contest from start to finish, it was... Not the most aesthetic grand uh, prelim final. In fact, one of the least aesthetic games I can think of this year. Uh, it was just an absolute war of attrition from start to finish. And it was a side, it was a game where, you know, throughout the first couple of quarters, both sides were still fumbling and there was a lot of pressure, admittedly, but it was scrappy. It was really scrappy. And I remember thinking at one point, you know, at some point, this game will open up. One team will get more composed than the other and they'll pull away, but it never did. For all four quarters, it was an absolute scrap. And I'm actually not trying to be disrespectful when I say that. It was scrappy in a sense that just both teams, the desperation from start to finish was the reason neither side could actually get a hold of their composure. At the start of the game, you know, the Collingwood uh, obviously got a bit of a, a head start, kicked a couple of goals early, particularly dominant in the clearances. And it felt as though GWS took a little bit of time to wake up. But in the first quarter, obviously, it was two goals to no no goals. But uh, statistically, you know, it was fairly even. It was 13 to 10 inside 50s. I think Collingwood certainly looked the better of the two sides and certainly when that crowd got roaring. The ball was certainly kind of locked in their forward half for a little while there, but GWS still managed to get some inside 50s. But out of the two, you felt that the Giants were a little bit more fumbly, took a little bit longer to wake up, which is interesting considering Collingwood was the one with the bye. But in the second term early, you know, GWS burned a couple of opportunities. Uh, I think they missed several shots. Callum Brown missed a couple himself. Uh, and then they got a circuit breaker through Hogan and then suddenly got a little bit of a run on. And the gap between the two sides seemed to shift. GWS had something like seven or eight inside 50s in a row. Tom Green gets a set shot, puts him in front, and suddenly the game shifted. GWS was clearly the better side for that patch. And it was just this weird trend all night where I think 14 of the 16 goals kicked were all kicked at the punt road end to the left of screen. But in a game where it was hard to pick out areas of dominance, you know, Collingwood was winning the clearances throughout the entire battle, which was an interesting observation as well because, you know, the Giants midfield is uh, really strong. In fact, it's their, it's their one wood, to be honest. You know, Cornelio, Kelly, Tom Green as well, uh, Toby Green, you know, who runs through there as well. And, and Collingwood had obviously lost the midfield rotation in Taylor Adams. So I thought that would be an interesting battle. And that was one that Collingwood won pretty emphatically, to be honest. But I think defensively is where GWS were controlling the game, particularly through that second and probably the third term as well. It was just that the ball was locked in GWS's front half. And even if they weren't scoring, every time the ball would come back out, there was a wall of GWS players. And I'll particularly shout out, you know, Sam Taylor, obviously one of the best intercept players in the game. And Buckley as well, I think really stood up well for them. GWS got a fourth goal of the quarter. I think it was four goals to zip in the second term. And, uh, you know, the, the pies look a little bit rattled. And that was something you don't really, well, I didn't really expect from a side that, you know, played finals last year, was involved in a thrilling prelim last year, had the home crowd, uh, notorious team for being good in close matches. This was a time where I was looking at them thinking, geez, they look way less settled than GWS. Nick Dacos runs in and it's not a regulation goal, but for Nick Dacos, he kind of shanked one that you would normally expect him to nail. So the Giants got out to a 17 point lead at heart in the third term. And I think at that point, you know, it felt like a big lead because obviously it was double their score. And because it's a low scoring game though, there's an illusion that they're further in front than they actually are. And then that's when the Collingwood onslaught came. There was a, a rush of goals and McCreary puts them in front 42 to 41 at one point. And that's where the game started to open up. And the, the, the impact of the crowd, I think really started to lift the pies. The last two minutes of the third term was just unreal. The desperation from both sides throughout the game, but particularly in the last two minutes, you just kept thinking, you know, a Giants player or, or a Pies player would run onto a loose ball, and then an opponent would just get a hand on them or just slap the ball like two inches a little bit further than they were expecting, and then the ball was back in uh, contention again. And it was just a fascinating contest, a really, really entertaining war of attrition, and I have to credit both sides. In the last term, I think the difference between the two sides was honestly, I think the Pies had a little bit more legs, and maybe GWS expended more energy in the second and third terms that allowed them to get that lead. Uh, but of course, you factor in as well, GWS traveling. They travel from Melbourne to Adelaide, back to Melbourne. I presume they're making trips to Sydney back in between those games too. And Pies had a week off um, and haven't traveled as well. So look, not taking anything away from Collingwood. I just think, you know, that 
that was very, very close to GWS making the grand final. And when you look at who their opponents would have been next week, you'd give them a chance to have won the whole thing had they just had things go right their way tonight. But look, credit goes to Collingwood. They deserve to be in the grand final. They have been the best team in the competition right up there with Brisbane. And to be honest, there's a, there's a part of me that is glad to see the best team or at least one of the two best teams into the grand final. It would have been nice to see an upset and a, and a surprise grand final appearance, but there is also something great about having the two best teams in September playing in the grand final, and we know we've got one of them. A big congratulations to Collingwood fans. I have always had a respect for Collingwood, particularly after the 2018 grand final where um, I was out in Melbourne that night and mingled with a lot of Collingwood fans, and I thought there was a lot of grace and humility and respect shown. And guys like Swoop Luke, who does a fantastic channel and Instagram page. Congratulations to all of you guys. Um, I will... I haven't decided who I'm going for yet because obviously we don't know who the opponent is yet but I will be pretty comfortable in saying that I'm not one of those people that will be satisfied in a Collingwood loss and I wouldn't have been satisfied or you know happy to see them lose tonight so whatever happens happens and I, I think Collingwood deserve a little bit of success they've been fantastic you know McRae's done a wonderful job there it's going to be exciting to see them in the grand final and yeah it's a reversal of fortunes from last year where they missed the grand final by it was at one point I think in the end of Sydney so first grand final since 2018 second one since 2011 and uh, the one before that they obviously won so there'll be a red hot chance to claim their first flag in 13 years and you know potentially it will be a 20 year anniversary game against the Brisbane Lions we'll see I guess but what I will say is that they'll probably want to play a little bit better than they did tonight I think there's uh I don't mean that to be too critical it's just that I'm sure even internally they'll think they could have played better than they did tonight although the Giants did very well so full respect to both clubs tonight thanks for putting on an amazing prelim final guys let me know in the comment section who you want to see Collingwood's opponent to be and and also who do you think it will be we've still got another prelim left and I'll be doing a review of that game as well so looking forward to it great start to the prelim final weekend let me know in the comment section your thoughts guys and I'll see you in the next one cheers